As we learned in the previous lecture, all of the energy of the Earth system comes from the Sun as shortwave electromagnetic radiation that is absorbed by the surface, heating the air close to the surface. As the Earth is spherical, the amount of radiation per square meter is higher at the latitudes perpendicular to the incoming radiation and smaller at higher latitudes. At the lower latitudes, the hot air rises and is replaced by the cold air coming from the poles. So there is energy surplus at the lower latitudes and energy deficit at the higher latitudes. The system tries to reach energy balance, so there is heat transfer in the upper air from the equator polewards. And the balancing flows at the surface from the poles towards the equator. However, in reality, the Earth is rotating below the winds. That makes it look like the winds would be turning uh, to the right at the northern hemisphere and to the left at the southern hemisphere. This is called the Coriolis effect or the Coriolis force. In reality, the rotation breaks the single cell to three cells. Rising air at the equator forms intense clouds and precipitation, the so-called intertropical convergence zone. This intertropical convergence zone is not stationary but moves northwards and southwards according to the season. Because the stratosphere is stable, rising air that reaches the tropopause starts to move polewards. The Coriolis effect turns the wind to the right, and by the time the air moving northward reaches about 30 degrees north, it has become a westerly wind that is moving to the east. Because of conservation of angular momentum, the poleward moving air increases speed. The increased speed and the Coriolis effect are responsible for the subtropical jet close to the tropopause around 30 degrees north. Descending air forms subtropical highs and dry areas around the horse latitudes. Some of the diverging air flows to the equator, turning right so to the west, forming the trade winds. And some of the diverging air flows poleward and turns to the east, causing the prevailing westerly winds at the surface. Around 60 degrees north, the warm subtropical air meets the cold polar air. The cold air forces the warm air to rise and forms a boundary between these two air masses, known as the polar front with clouds and precipitation. The large temperature contrast results in the polar front jet stream in the vicinity of the upper parts of the polar front. At the poles, the coldest air decreases and causes high pressure over the poles. At the surface, the air moving from the poles turns to the right, forming polar easterly winds. So this is now for the northern hemisphere. At the southern hemisphere, you have to remember that the Coriolis effect turns the wind to the left and makes this work the vice versa. So, in reality, the atmosphere of the Earth works not as a single cell model, but as a tree cell model that is illustrated here. And this is how the tree cell model looks in reality. Overall, the tree cell model explains reasonably well the mean surface winds and pressure.